Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Necks, and we are going to make these beautiful mitts. Like, I will humbly say that these are probably the nicest mitts I think I've ever personally made. I absolutely love them, and I'm going to make some in other colors too. I use the Karen Colorama Ogo yarn. Um, I realize that it is out of... Um, they don't make it anymore. Sadly, I don't understand why, but they don't make it anymore. I was able to pick up quite a few when I knew they were um, discontinuing them. And it is a five bulky, but you choose whatever five bulky weight yarn that you have and that you like and the colors that you like. Now, this one that I have, of course, because it has graduated colors, um, the main body of the mitt went from a dark gray to a mid-tone gray to a light gray. And that ivory was also in the ball and I chose to use that for the cuff and for the um, fair isle. But you can make these your own and use whatever colors of yarn you like. And uh, if you want to use the same sizing as what I did, just stick with the five bulky and, um, and it'll come out the same size, okay? We're going to use our 24 peg loom with this as well. So, um, once you get those supplies ready that you have, let's get let's get going on this beautiful project. And please, please hit that like and subscribe button down below. That means a lot to me when you do that. And uh, show me your work in my Facebook group. Friends, it's a pleasure spending time with you. So let's get going. Okay, friends, we're going to begin our project. Now, again, if you can't find this... this um particular yarn use the yarn of your choice but if you're following my row counts you're going to want to use a, a bulky five okay so find your bulky five yarn and uh let's get started and you can change colors like what i'm doing or you can make it in um a solid color and just use um a, a contrasting color for your fair isle whatever you like so let's just uh begin we're gonna cast on we're gonna go behind and in front we're gonna do an e-wrap cast on behind and in front to start with anyways first row behind and in front behind and in front wrapping it around every peg just like this okay and i'm not putting lots of tension on it i'm just letting it slip through my fingers i have loose tension coming out of the end out of the ball it's not really a ball i just had to pull all the colors apart from from the skein and so now i just have a loose little pile like this and now we've gone around once with our e-wrap we're going to push down our our rows okay and then we're going to do a u-wrap so to do a u-wrap we're going to go in front of that first peg and behind you're going to hold it with your fingers because when you hold it with your fingers then you're making that u shape just like that you're going to take your loom pick, peg pick and you're going to take that bottom loop over the top loop just like that move on to the next one just across the front and hold it back with your fingers just like that and knit off okay this is counting as row one okay so we're taking that yarn going in front of our peg taking it to the back holding it with your fingers doing the u wrap just like so Now, I generally, when I'm doing an e-wrap cast on and I do the second row as an e-wrap, I count that as my cast on row and I don't count it as my working row. But in this project, I'm counting this as row one. Okay. Just in case you're a little confused as to why I'm saying that this is row one. Doesn't matter if you take your pick and you go and you scoop it up like this and go over. I don't like doing that as you can just see it's uh, harder for me or you can go underneath and pull it over this is how I always how I always do it over I put my finger on my top of my peg and I help that and I go over just like that so you're going to continue around till you get to the end and then I will see you back all right so I'm all around I'm going to continue the same process. So now peg one is here. This is peg 24. We're going to U-wrap, pick up the stitch, put it over, beginning row two, okay? We're going to go all around just like this, U-wrapping every peg. And make sure when you get to the end of your row that you tally it, that you count it on your counter, or you um, maybe have a pen and a paper and you're tallying it that way. Um, make sure that you 
that you mark it at the end of your row. That's how I do mine. I usually, you can do it at the beginning of the row if, the, if you prefer to do that, but um, I mark it when I get to the end, okay? And I'm going to do 30 rows of E-Wrap, okay? So you go ahead and you just keep going round and round and round like this. When I'm not in the camera, I, I hold it a little bit differently and I go, I can go a lot faster, but in the camera, I want you to see every step here. So you're going to just keep doing a U-Wrap all the way around your loom, counting your rows until you have completed 30 rows of U-Wrap, okay? All right, friends, grab yourself a coffee and enjoy the process. I'll see you when you get done. All right, now that wasn't so bad, was it? No, it was fun. Now you can look at this and look how tight that looks, okay? But once you stretch it out, oh, just, I love doing this part. And I stretch it out now just because it's easier to do it now than when it's folded in half and joined already. So this is our cuff. Um, that is just gorgeous. But what we're gonna do is we are going to cut off a tail of our cream. We're going to bring this up into our loom, just like this, okay? I'm gonna bring that tail across. To this side okay and we're going to smooth this out and now we're going to join so this is i leave this out because i like to tie a knot um some people hide this in there and then they do this part but i like to uh to, to leave it out between the 24th and the first pig and then i tie off in a knot later and hide it with my needle i just feel more like it's secure better secure that way so this is needle number one okay i'm going to follow that row all the way up so trail that all the way up and if you need to stretch it out a little bit to follow that row up then that's good until you get to the very top just like this okay then you're going to take that top loop and you're going to place it over peg one just like that okay from there we're going to just move across so unfold it and you'll see how this comes around here and then this one's coming out underneath it you just pick up that next loop and put it over peg two Stretch this out. I have my fingers working on the inside here, stretching this out and holding it makes it easier. Okay, so this one's coming around here and you can see this one's coming underneath it. So you pick that next loop up and you put it over peg three and you smooth out the next one and you do the same thing. You pick up the very next loop, put it over peg four. Okay, and then the very next one, it's just very, very easy to see and you pop it over that next peg. And we're gonna do that all the way around to join our cuff, okay? So when you have it on your peg too, you can see that there's the there's the loop that's come around here. This one right next to it is the one you're gonna pick up, okay? Just like that, if that helps you to see it a little bit better, okay? Put, pick it up like that and over. It's very, very easy to grab. So if you're if you're having a hard time, you're thinking too hard, <laughs> okay? Don't think too hard. Just pick up the very next loop that's, that's um, ready to go over that ne very next peg. Just like so. And we're putting two loops on our on our pegs as we're doing that. We're adding this extra, the second one. So now there's two loops on the peg. And then we're gonna go ahead after we get done there, going all the way around and we're going to knit that off. Okay, and it'll be joined beautifully. So you keep going around just like this, adding your loops over your peg. And I will see you at the end. All right, so I have one more to do. This one's a little hard to find because it's tight, but I know where it is. It's hiding down there. Okay, there we go. So we have that one over. Now we've got to make sure that our um, yarn tails are where they're supposed to be. So this, this yarn end is here, and this other one is just where peg one is. And we're gonna begin knitting off. So you're gonna take that bottom loop. First one is very tight, put it over the top, okay? On peg two, you're gonna do the same thing. And we're gonna knit off, securing our cuff on all 24 pegs, okay? So pick up the loop, go up and over, just like so, okay? It's a little tight, but you know what? That's okay. We want it to be actually, because then our cuff is nice and it's beautiful. Don't have any holes. 
So we're almost around to the end. We're gonna then take our darkest gray color that we have. So for me, it's this dark gray that's sitting here. Um, I've already got it ready and we're going to add that. Now I am not counting this row. I'm just finishing off my cuff and there we go. We've got a double, double layer cuff. It's absolutely beautiful. And we're going to just pop these into the middle. I'm gonna cut this long one off. It doesn't need to be that long. Okay, I'm gonna pop them into the middle and then give it a tie. on the inside there, just like that. Give it a nice firm knot. Then I'm gonna just let those fall loosely into the inside, okay? Just like that. We're gonna grab our darkest charcoal color. We are going to make a slip knot. And instead of attaching it to our anchor peg like we normally do, we're gonna put this right on peg one, okay? So here's our anchor peg. Peg one is right to the right of it. Pop that loop over top. Take this other end, pop it in the middle, okay? That will be peg one worked right here. We're gonna take that bottom loop over the top, but we're going to then move on and do our e wrap So you can work this one. Then you're gonna take this next one do our U-wrap. I think I said E-wrap, I meant U-wrap. Then we're going to U-wrap all the way around with this new color. Just like what we did for our, our cuff, but we're going to do 12 rows, okay? So make sure you start your counter back at zero. And you go ahead and you U-wrap 12 rows and that will take us, I'll show you on this mint. That will be this part right here, okay? So that's gonna take us to where our thumb is going to begin. So here's what our cuff looks like, it's beautiful. This is the part that's gonna be um, from here to here, okay? So I'm gonna measure that for you, just so you can get an idea, because I think this cuff size is perfect for any, for any um, hand size. Now, the only difference is if you have a bigger hand than me, then you might wanna have a couple more rows here, but I still will take a guess and say that I think that the 12 rows, it's two inches, is probably going to be sufficient for any hand size. The place where you're gonna to wanna to make your difference is here, okay? Once we attach the thumb, you might wanna make it a little bit longer there. Like for me, my, my hand, I don't make mitts in every size for my channel. I just make the size that fits me. <laughs> and then you have the basic pattern and you can go from there, okay? So for me, my hand from, let's say from our, from the thumb, from the crook of the thumb there to the end is about five inches, okay? So when I've done my mitt, it's five inches because there's give, you're gonna have stretch. I don't wanna go beyond that. So for you, you're gonna to have to figure out whether you need to add more rows to do that. And I show you how to do that once we get to that part. I'll show you how you put your hand in and you determine if you need to do more. But I think that you're pretty safe in doing 12 rows here for, for the wrist, okay? Um, not for the wrist, the wrist is this part, the, the ivory, but for this part from your wrist to, to the um, base of your thumb. I think 12 rows will be enough for any size. So you go ahead and you, you wrap 12 rows and then when you're done that, come back and see me and we will assess the situation and determine whether you need to do more or not. Um, I'll put it on my hand and I'll show you what it looks like and, uh, and help you um, guide you into whether or not you should do more, okay? I would think this would be for a small hand. So, um, you know, if you wanna do a child size mitt, then you, you, can, you can make this less. Um, so you've got the basic construction of the mitt here and you can take that and then make it work for what you, your needs are. But um, for my hand, this is perfect, okay? So we're gonna continue going until you have 12 rows of this darkest gray or whatever your dark color is that you chose. Um, and, and then when you get there, I will see you back. All right, friends, have fun, enjoy the process, and we will see you soon. All right, so I have my 12 rows done. Then I'm gonna take my loom and I'm going to just pull it down like this, just so that I can stretch out those rows. And I'm doing that so that I can accurately, me accurately measure it on my um, hand. Okay, so then I'm gonna put put this on. Okay, that sits where my, where my wrist is up to here. Okay, so if you hold that up to there, 
Then you just look up on, when you hold that there, push up on, on this, um, on the bottom of your loom just to see where that sits. And if it sits like by the crook of your thumb there or close to it, knowing that this part still has to bend up, um, then that's good. Or another thing you can do, which is maybe more accurate, is beforehand measure from there to your wrist. And mine is just a little bit over, not quite to the wrist, it's two and a half inches. But we know that this has some stretch in it, okay? So to measure it from here on the inside, up to the top is two inches. And then there's some stretch, I could get it to two and a half for sure. I'm gonna leave it at that. I think that's perfect for me. So that's just a little way that you can measure to see. So put it on, see where it sits comfortably. And if it looks like it's close to your thumb, then you know that that's the way it needs to be. You can either lessen this or extend it, um, whatever works for you, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our thumb. So we're gonna keep the same color on and we're gonna work our thumb over five needles, okay? So we're gonna go and you wrap that first one. I had to pause there for a second with my brain and think what am I actually gonna do, okay? We're gonna you wrap and then we're gonna you wrap the second one three, four, and five. Okay, then I'm gonna come around. So it's coming off the fifth um, needle or peg. We're gonna come around and we're gonna knit that one off again. One or five, you can say, four, three, two, one, this is row two. Then you'll go the other way. One, two, three, only working over four or five pegs. Four, and five, and I'll go back one more time for row four. One, two, three, four and five. Now, as you continue knitting, and we're going to do 34 rows, um, but stick with me for a second because I'm going to explain something to you. But as you continue knitting, this will get a dip in it. I'll, I'll see you back when it starts to dip. And then you just keep putting your thumb in there to see if it's the right length. For me, I need 34 rows. But also, if you want to make this thumb um, wider, you can go over six pegs, okay? So if you have a fairly wide thumb, um, then, then maybe go over six pegs. But this, this fits my thumb just absolutely perfect. Okay. So it's kind of hard for you to see exactly how wide my thumb is, but I have an average hand. So I think I think five pegs is enough for pretty much anybody because it, it can still stretch either way. And, and if you have a thinner thumb than I do, um, it'll still fit. So I think um, over five pegs is perfect. But again, if you have a um, much bigger hand, then maybe you want to do it over six. You have to decide that, okay? So I'm going to do 34 rows, but you... Um, may have a shorter thumb than me. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do it until it starts to make a dip in it and then I'll show you how you measure it. So keep going until you get about, I don't know, maybe 25 rows, then come back and see me and I'll show you what I do, okay? All right, friends, have fun and I'll see you back shortly. <laughs> All right, so I have done 24 and you can see that there's a little space forming for your thumb. So you're gonna just put your thumb in there just like that. And you're going to, you can, how can I point that camera? You're just going to put it in there until it reaches the base of your thumb, right in there, okay? And so for me, that's 24 rows. I'm going to do another 10 rows, um, but you always wanna do an even number because you wanna end your thumb rows on peg one, okay? So don't end on peg five over here, end on peg one. So just keep putting your thumb in there until it's the right length, just like that. And when it's at the right length for your thumb, then see me back in the next clip, okay? All right, so I have my 34 rows, um, and I already cut off my tail, sorry. You're gonna end up cutting off your tail because um, we're gonna switch colors, but I, I have my um, 34 rows done. I'm gonna just slip my hand in there like that and put my thumb in just so I can see if it's the right fit. That's coming right up to the crook of my, of my thumb there, right? where it needs to come. So it's perfect. Now, before you try it on, you're gonna make sure that you stretch this out because then you'll get an accurate measurement. I've already gone and done that. Um, and then when it's the right amount of rows, 
We're gonna we're gonna invisible stitch this up once we get it off the machine, um, off the uh, loom. Okay, we're going to then cut your working yarn, toss that into the center just like that. Okay, I cut off long enough so that um, when I'm done tying my knot and this is off the loom, I have enough um, length that I can go and hide it. Okay, so cut off a length there. Then you're gonna take your medium gray color or whatever your next color is going to be. You can make this multiple colors, any color scheme you want, and it'll be beautiful. Put a slip knot on there, okay? We're going to attach that to peg number one, okay? You don't see much of a color change there, but there is one, but when you have your mitt together, you see how this gradually changes. Um, we're going we're going from our dark to our mid-tone to our light. I love how it looks. I think it looks very, very pretty, okay? So we are going to Put that over our peg one and then where's my loom pick there it is we're going to knit that off just like that then you're going to pull on that okay then you're going to u-wrap peg two this whole project is done with u-wraps okay peg three peg four and you're going to go around just like what we've been doing but you're going to do for three rounds so keep going forget that that thumb section was there and just keep going all around for three rounds and when you have your three rounds done see me back and we'll begin our fair isle pattern okay all right i've done my three rows now we are going to grab our ivory or whatever color you used for your cuff we're going to put a slip knot over peg two. So this is peg one, peg two. Put that over peg two, okay? Then we're gonna tighten it. Leave that tail in the center. But before we do peg one, peg two, we're gonna take our gray yarn and we're gonna U-wrap peg one, okay? Peg one, then I'm gonna tighten this, this loop. Then we're gonna knit off peg two just like that. So I've done gray, ivory, and we're going to keep our alternating. So the easiest way to do that, let me just slip this tail down into the, into the middle. Grab those like that. Okay. So all I'm going to do is now I'm going to just swing that over and you wrap it. Then take my white one, swing that over. You wrap the next one. Then the gray, behind and in front, take my ivory in front. So every other needle is ivory. And I'm just holding these with my three fingers like that. And I'm just going back and forth, just like, like so. Okay, so behind that next peg, oops, behind that next peg and in front of the next one. Then it's the ivory's turn. Then it's the gray. It's not hard. Um, it looks hard because of the way I'm positioning this to get under the camera, but you hold this a little closer to your body and you're gonna realize that it's actually not hard at all. You will you will get in the groove of, of how to maneuver your, your thumb and your finger. And uh, when it's up like this and you're just going like this and like this, that's how I do it, okay? Back and forth, just like this. And I work those, those pegs, okay? So I'm gonna do that all the way around. This is row four of this um, second color that we've attached. Every time we change our grays, um, so this this was this first dark one was twelve rows. This next medium tone gray that we're working is a total of twelve rows intermixed with our ivory and gray rows. Okay, so this is row four, and when I get to the end, we're going to continue um, with the gray, and I'll see you back when we do that. I'm on peg 24, which was an ivory, okay? So now if you look around, you're gonna have gray, ivory, gray, ivory, gray, ivory, all the way around, okay? That was row four. So for row five, we're gonna just get this, so let me mark row four. We're going to get our ivory just out of the way, okay? Just put it back there, get it out of the way. Then we're gonna U-wrap, peg one, peg two, all in gray, and we're gonna do three rows, okay? So row five, six, and seven are all in your 
solid mid-tone gray. So keep going and do three more rows of solid gray and I'll see you back. All right, so I finished row seven of these 12. So again, with the second color that gray that we picked up, we're doing 12 rows in total with that color, okay? So we are now on row eight. Every fourth row, we're going to alternate our colors. So the last, on row four, I did gray, ivory, gray, ivory. So now I'm gonna do ivory. I'm gonna pick up the ivory. I'm gonna start with the ivory. And then gray, okay? Then ivory, and gray. And we're gonna alternate that all the way around. Ivory, and gray. And you're gonna continue that patterning all the way around till we get to our end peg. And then I'll see you back and give you some further instructions, okay? So this is row eight. All right, so if you finished row eight, you should have on peg one, you should have your ivory, then gray, ivory, gray, ivory, gray, all the way around, finishing up with your gray on peg 24, okay? So that is row eight of this set of 12 complete. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna drop your ivory, and every time you do your gray rows, um, just untwist your ivory from around the, um, from around your, your yarn, because so you don't want to get it getting twisted every time you go around. So just manage that as you go after each row, okay? But now what you're going to do is you're going to do row 9, 10, and 11. So three more ro rows of U-wrap all the way around for three rows. So only using gray, U-wrap three more rows. Then when you're finished that, you're going to come back and do one more row of Fair Isle. But this time, instead of starting with ivory, you're going to start with your gray. So the first row of Fair Isle, we started with gray. The second row, we started with ivory. And then the third time we do it, we're starting with gray again. All right. So friends, do three rows of solid gray. Then do one row of Fair Isle, starting with gray, ivory, gray, ivory. And when you have those next four rows completed, I will see you back. All right, if you're still with me, great job. So you would have just completed row 12 of your mid-tone color of gray and your gray strand should be coming off of peg 23 and your ivory strand will be coming off of peg 24. All right, we are going to snip off. We're gonna cut that dark mid-tone gray, okay? We're gonna tuck that down. We're gonna leave the ivory there. We're gonna grab our light gray, okay? Where is my end? There it is. We're gonna grab our light gray. We're going to make a slip knot. We're gonna add that to peg one, okay? Just like that. Put that down in the center, tighten that. Now that ivory strand, we're just gonna let that hang and keep working around it just like what we've been doing. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna knit off peg one. So now we've started our new color. Let's concentrate on 12 rows of this light gray color, okay? But we're not gonna do as many Fair Isle rows. We're just gonna have one Fair Isle row in here, okay? So that's right here. We're gonna do our three rows of solid. Then we're gonna do our Fair Isle. Then we're gonna finish for our 12, okay? So I'm, we'll, we'll do three rows of gray, one row of Fair Isle, eight rows of gray, and I've got more than eight rows there, but I'm gonna, um, when I make, make it to 12 in total, then um, I'll come back and show you how you judge when to stop yours, okay? So let's do three rows of light gray. Then we're gonna do our fair aisle row. So this first row, we started with gray and then ivory. This one, we started with, okay, gray and ivory. Then we started with ivory and gray. Gray, ivory, ivory and gray. So this one here, the next row that we do with Fair Isle, we're gonna start with our ivory, okay? And that way they're staggered. See how these are staggered like this? Do, 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 do. And that's what we want, okay? So again, do three rows of gray, and then we're gonna do our Fair Isle. I'm gonna come back and see you when I'm on my Fair Isle just to make sure that we're getting the order right. And, um, and we'll go from there. So three rows of you wrapped gray, and I'll see you back. 
I'm just going to pop on quick before I finish my first row here. Um, when you add your first color, make sure you tie, or, or pardon me, when you cut off that last color, make sure you tie it to your um, ivory. Otherwise, it's going to risk coming loose, okay? So you tie a knot to finish that off, then hide that into the end. That way, because mine fell off, I pulled it, I pulled it out, and so I, I fixed it. But um, make sure that before you um, start your your row or before you get to the end that you tie that, that tail off into a nice firm knot. Okay, keep going. I'll see you after three rows of gray. All right, man, this is going along so fast. Once, you, once you've done this once, um, like anything, you know, the ones that you make after just go so much faster. So we're gonna now, we've done our three rows of our light gray. We're gonna now do our fair isle row, starting with our ivory, okay? So ivory, on peg one, then gray on peg two, ivory, and gray, and you know the routine, you're going to do that all the way around, okay? Okay, and so when we get all the way around with this, see me back, and I'm going to give you some further instructions. All right, we've finished row four of this section, which is alternating ivory gray, ivory gray, ivory gray. And now we want to finish our 12 row section and we're going to do eight rows of just the gray. So you can go ahead, you can cut this ivory one off. Then you don't have to bother with that. Just tuck it into the inside there. Um, and we're going to, actually what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna just tuck it in there. I'm gonna tie it to this gray one here that I'm working with. Okay, just like this, because otherwise when you get around, it loosens when you when you uh, work that peg. Okay, so tie that tight. That one's done. Now you can continue on with your gray. And we're going to hide all these tails. Don't worry about that. Those will get hidden after we take our, prod our um, mittens off our loom and we'll be good to go. So, okay, so you're going to go ahead and knit rows 5 to 12, which is 8 rows in just gray. So you knit just like this. All the, round, all the way around for eight rows. And when you're done that, see me back and we will do the measuring and I'll show you how you, how you decide what you're going to, what length you're gonna do and how, how much further I've gone for myself. And we're almost done. So good job, my friends. If, you've, uh, if you're with me and, and you uh, have completed it up to this point, you have accomplished it and you should be proud, especially if this is your first time, be proud. Okay, so we'll see you when you get finished eight solid rows. Okay, friends, I have finished the 12 rows in that section. Okay. And uh, this is looking great. You're going to pull it through and you're going to stretch it. Okay. Because you have to make those stitches take the shape that they're going to take when it's off the machine. So we always stretch our, our work widthwise and lengthwise, but you have to do it on, on the, I keep calling it a machine because of course, if you've seen my channel, it's, I've got circular knitting on there and I've got way more circular knitting videos at this point than <laughs> videos. And, uh, and so sorry when I refer it to it as a machine, it kind of is, but it's like, you know, whatever. So you got to stretch it so you can get an accurate fit. Then you're going to stick your hand in there and in the thumb, and look at that, it's just like, it's so nice. But when I when I take this and I flip it over, it's not long enough for my fingers yet, okay? So put it right, your hand right in there. Oops, I'm gonna come down. Put your hand right in there and then flip this over so you can see where it's sitting. And for me, I'm gonna do four more rows, okay? So I know from this other mitt that I made that four more rows is enough. So I'm gonna, if your hands, your fingers are shorter than mine, this might come, once it gets to the tips of your finger, to the very tip, not farther, um, then you know it's long enough to cinch. Because when you cinch it, it's going to make it a little bit shorter yet, but then it stretches when you get it on. So you don't want a mitt that's way too long. So you want, you want your top row to come right to the, to the tip of your finger, okay? So I'm going to do four more rows, and then I'll, I'll show you what it looks like, and um, then we'll cast off, okay? Okay, so I finished the extra four rows. So with this color, I have 16 in total, okay? And um, 
when I stretch it out, okay, so I stretched out those stitches to make them um, the way they're going to be, and I just lay my fingers down like this, and it comes to the tips of my fingers, that's all I'm going to do. And that's how you can measure yours. Um, when you hold it up this way, it's hard to see, but if you just lay it flat like this, then you know um, that's what you need. So we're going to now cast off. So you're going to take your yarn tail and you're going to wrap it around your your loom twice okay just like that just so you know it's long enough you're going to cut it off you're going to get this out of the way so you don't have so much clutter okay and then we're going to begin our cast off so what i'm going to do there is i'm going to put it between my 24th and first peg i'm going to actually lift these all up normally we push them down but this time i'm going to push them up not all the way but partially okay and then I'm going to put this underneath, put my hook over the top, scoop that up and bring it through. Now you can do it the other way too. Like you can lay it on top here and then go underneath and pull it through, whichever way works better for you, whichever way um, feels more normal or more natural, okay? But I like to put it underneath, put my hook through that loop from the top down, pull it through. Go to the next one. Put my hook underneath that loop, scoop that up and pull it through. I'm going to do that all the way around. And if it gets really tight and you're having a hard time, then you can uh, take some of these pegs off um, and give yourself some, some slack there. There won't be as much tension, but I'm going to just keep going around like this until I have all of the pegs worked. Okay. And don't tighten it um, yet stick with me because I'm going to show you two different ways that you can do it okay um, of course the way that I've done it but there is there is another way that you can do it that's not quite as tight and you might like that better so stick with me and I'll see you when we get this off all right so once you have them all worked and I did take some of them off because it was getting tight if you haven't taken the first one off yet um, I scoop back underneath that one, but you don't have to. I just find it joins these two better. But if you haven't done it, if you've taken it off already, it's it's not a big deal, okay? So we're gonna remove these from our loom. Take that out of the way. I'm gonna just pull that a little bit, not a lot. And we're going to work on our thumb and on the inside, fixing the, uh, fixing the knot so what you're going to do is you're going to put your hand inside of there it's kind of hard to work around all those little um knots that are in there but you're going to just pull that through without stretching your cuff too much i don't like to uh there we go just like that okay and we're going to work with this got all these little ends well there's not too many but there are some So you're going to grab your, your needle, okay, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to hide our ends. Now this one I had tied off when I did my color change, so I'm just going to weave it in I just pick up some stitches like that, I'm not doing anything fancy here, and weave it through. And it'll catch and then I'm going to go back just through a few stitches okay I'm going to do that with all my loose ends this one I have to actually put my needle in first because it's too short these are wool needles metal wool needles that have this wonderful little plastic end on them okay this little loop it's easy to get your yarn through I get them on Amazon but you can also get them in Walmart so if um, you're looking at them and saying what did you get those needles from they come in a package of three different sizes I don't know if you can see that very well um, and they're just wonderful I just love them okay so I'm going to go ahead and if there's one that's not knotted off I'm going to knot it to whichever um, is the closest to it I'm going to hide all those ends and once that's done I'll see you back I'm going to even hide this one okay I'm going to undo this knot because this is too loose I don't like that big loop there I'm going to undo the knot then and it's easy to do just with your pick that's a little trick if you have a loom pick which you do have <laughs> See, I said that because I say that when I'm circular knitting. Um, all you got to do is stick your, your loom into that knot and pull it. And it's an easy way to undo a knot, okay? And this one, 
has a knot in it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hide all the, all the ends that I possibly can and I'll see you back. So once you have that done and those are hidden, we are going to sew up our sides of our mitten, okay? So put your hand in there just so you can see where the edge is going to be. Now, I did try to do the invisible join on the other mitt, but these stitches are, because it's black, even being right close to it with a bright light, I was having such a hard time seeing the stitches. I thought, no, I'm not going to fight with it. It looks fine to do it this way too. So I put it on just so that I can see where the tip is here. And I'm going to insert my needle. Pull it through. Leaving a bit of a tail for closing off later. Then I know that this is where my top is. And I'm going to put it on again when I get down to the bottom here, just so that we can um, close up that part that's right here. Okay. So then all I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick up the edge and come around and grab it like that. Okay. Just like that. Then go in on this side, come out on the other side and do the same thing. Okay, and pull it tight and go down a little farther and I'm pulling that and I'm going to close this going all the way down to about there. Okay, then the rest of this I'm going to close when it's on my hand. So go ahead, finish that all the way down the row and pull it nice and tight. But when you're pulling it tight, make sure that you hold it and pull it. Otherwise, you're going to pull it tight and it'll gather in there. And you don't want that. You just want your stitch that you're just that you just made to be tight. OK, so make your stitch, then pinch it and pull it tight. OK, I'll see you in just a second. OK. All right, so I have it on. That's part way down. OK, and I'm just going to then take my needle and I'm going to sew it up where it needs to be sewn, but it's, I find it much easier when I have it on. Okay. Pick up a couple strands if you can, instead of just the one on the end and it's going to hold nicer. Just like that. See, and I'm not pulling too tight. I'm just, I'm just fixing that little hole. See, that's perfect. Just like that. Oh, and then move your thumb a little bit. I mean, this is going to be all closed up, but there's a little hole there. I do not want that. So I'm going to go back up into there. I'm just gonna pick up two strands always because it makes nicer, looks nicer. Okay, and we're gonna pick that up just like that. Then I am literally going to weave this in. You could leave a longer one here and then go down that other side as well, and but I'm gonna just do it this way. I'm not pulling, I'm just weaving. Till I get to the other side. Okay. I've said many times on my circular knitting videos, I am not a seamstress. I do the best that I can, but if you're a seamstress and you're saying, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but it works for me. So I'm doing the best that I can. But I'm going to go down and I'm going to actually sew this first. Because I'm down here. Why not? Okay. Pick up two. Pick up two. And you can see where I'm going with this. I'm going to work my way up. So you just poke your needle where you think it's going to look the best. And you close it up. Okay, just like that. Except for, is that a little hole there? Let's see. Yep, I don't like that. So, see, I'm just going to go down. Nothing fancy. I just make it work. And close that up. Then I'm going to come back up to here. And then I'm going to finish sewing all the way up. Going into here, coming across, grabbing the top of that row. And 
and you get the idea. Now it looks square on the inside, but it doesn't look square on the outside. Okay, just like that. I can take it off now. And I'm going to finish that off. Tie a little knot. Okay, and I'm just gonna carry this across to the other side. Make it easier to tie a knot on, on over here. But when you tie your knot here, make sure that you don't pull on this because you tighten it with the other one, like, like that, because you will gather in there, okay? So I'm just gonna give it a little, a little tie. And that knot is not gonna be felt on your thumb, so don't worry. Then you're gonna cut this off and you're gonna hide your ends the best that you can, just weaving them in and out of the thumb there. And then we're going to um, keep it inside out like this and we're going to finish off the end. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pull on our end. Now, the two ways are, are similar, but they're just, um, for this one, I pulled it snug, okay? Because I like that rounded edge, the tight edge on the fingers. Um, so you can pull this tight and then reinforce it by going around that top row um, a couple times, or you can just pull it so it's round here, but straight there, okay? And then when you do it that way, I'm not gonna do it that way because it's not how I want um, my mitts, but uh, it, does, it does look nice that way too. So then you would just pull it so that you have an opening there, squeeze that together, then you're gonna sew this together. Um, just like what we sewed up the thumb, you're gonna do it on the end here, and then you'll have a flat top on your mitt instead of, instead of a, um, a round one like what I just uh, showed you here, okay? But for me, I'm gonna pull this tight, Okay, and I'm going to cut it off so it's not so long to work with. Take my needle, and we are going to just reinforce it around to the top row of stitches, okay? So just pick up that top row and pull, okay? And then continue around, pick up that top, top row, get under there with your pointy needle, and pull, you see how it closes? Okay, and then we're gonna just knot it off to secure. I like to pick up at least two, two uh, yarn rows there, okay? Okay, now you're gonna give me hassles just because we're at the end of the project. There we go. <laughs> okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this and I'm gonna just pick up some stitches. Maybe one more, if I can get in there. And pull it through. Okay, then to secure, I'll just go back up a couple stitches just like that pull it through don't pull it tight because you'll pucker that and you'll change the look of it cut that off turn your mitt the other way okay we've turned it the other way get your thumb out Sometimes it's hard to do because it's it's tight. But you know what? You just work on it. Take your loom pick if you have to and pull on it. Just like that. Then when you put your hand in, you'll be able to finish it. Put it on. And there you go. Oh, so, so nice. So you can see that a little bit, but for the most part, it, like it's beautiful. Let's put the other one on. And there you go. Friends, I love them. <laughs> I truly love them. And I hope you do too. Um, there you go. We have two beautiful, beautiful mitts. And again, you can change the top if you like to leave it a little bit more square. Um, you can add rows right in here if you need them to be a little bit longer. Um, you can add or take away rows there. You can make a really long cuff. You have the basic construction of these mitts. Now you can go to town and make them your own. 
I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, my friends, and that you made yourself a pair. Um, please come on over to my Facebook group, Coalinates and Knacks, and show us your finished work. Also, um, share it in other groups too and, and circulate the pattern. That would help me out too, and I would love it if you would do that. Um, so thank you for joining me. Take care, my friends. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.